Logical fallacies appeal to emotion. This is a difficult one to address because in everyday life we are subject to events, people, advertisements, etc. that tug at our heartstrings one way or another, either positive or negative. We feel enraged and or happy at certain images or events, and those conclusions might indeed compel us to choose a position without looking further into the facts of the information itself. One primary example we can easily look to, as it's not far in our immediate past, is immediately following the tragic events of September 11th, many people felt compelled to lash back, attack, get those who hurt us, whoever they are, get them now, don't think about it, just act, and within a year we launched a war. A war that not everybody agreed with at by that time, but the emotions were still strong, the pain was still there, action was preferred to inaction or political discourse. Knowing what the real facts were about the situation almost became irrelevant in wake of the emotion that we felt. Yes, the emotion was legitimate. The result of choosing the conclusion based on the emotion may not have been the best course. When we appeal to emotion as our argument, we fail to make a logical choice. When we base our choices on emotion, we do not make a choice based on reason. We make a choice based on the emotion. This thing makes me happy. This thing makes me upset. This thing furiates me, etc. When we choose to go along with a presentation because we are swayed by emotion rather than the argument itself we have committed this fallacy yet in everyday life we are prone to do this we can see emotional appeals throughout television one such emotional appeal might be these people in this country are starving and you could help them donate ten dollars it might be true that these people are starving. In fact, doing spot research could indeed find out whether or not they are starving. Doing further research into the company that is proposing to help these people might be warranted before sending them your hard-earned money. However, again, because people sometimes immediately respond to the emotion rather than the facts, you might send your hard-earned money to a company who will keep 90% of it and use the remainder on actually helping the people that are starving. If you had only spent enough time to check into this said company, you would have found out what their practices really were. You might even be compelled to do more research to find out a company that will send your money in full or at least in a worthwhile percentage to help the people of that country. It might be even easier and or more prudent if your heart is desiring to help people to help people here in America or local homeless rather than those far away. It's true that the dollar can stretch more in other countries. So yes, in a sense, a dollar can go further to help more people somewhere else than here. But if your desire is to help people in general and you want to see an immediate result, it might be more prudent to do it here rather than there. Regardless of how you decide in the end, you should not use emotion to make your decision. Otherwise, you have committed this fallacy. I know that my essay is six weeks overdue and the final exam is over. But I have had many personal problems. I had a part-time job because I needed to scrape together enough money to stay in school. And I've been having emotional problems. The person by I've been living with has just left me. And my dog just died. Also, my grandmother is very sick. Even so, I would have handed in the essay earlier, but my computer was broken and I could not afford to get it fixed. Also, I needed this one course to graduate, but if I fail it, I can't stay in this country any longer to complete my degree because I've already booked my flight home. Is this an appeal to emotion? Certainly the circumstances involved are tragic, 
but should the professor give the essay an extension? After all, they had had plenty of time to turn it in. Why didn't they bring this information to the professor sooner? Could these events be made up? The professor certainly should investigate to find out whether or not these events are true. If so, perhaps the professor will extend the deadline for this particular student. Unless, of course, the professor is afraid that when other students hear about this event, they might begin making up stories in order to get extensions. It might be that the professor indeed does extend the deadline for this particular student, but why should they do so? If they do so purely on the emotions of the student, they have committed this fallacy. What should the professor do? In a logical format, the professor should first find out these events are actually true to the best of his abilities. Obviously, there will be events that he cannot verify, but he should be able to verify at least a few of them to satisfy that this is indeed a factual telling. He might sit down and decide to change his policy based upon these extraordinary circumstances, and in the future his policy might indeed become that given enough extraordinary circumstances, you are allowed to hand in your paper late. However, he might say that you should have brought this information to him earlier, and if you had, he could have sat down with you and helped you out with your papers in a timely manner. The professor might feel complied to go with his original plan, which is to only accept papers when they are due. Doing this might seem very harsh and unfair to the student, but the professor might see this as a lesson in life. But isn't that too an appeal to emotion? Yes, it's an appeal to the emotion of the professor themselves. The emotion of, I want this person to learn a life lesson. That emotion, too, should not be the only primary reason why he should make a decision. He might fear the result that if other students hear about this incident, that they might begin making up stories or finding personal reasons to get out of handy and paperwork on time. That might be true, but that's another sort of emotion, an appeal to fear the fear that other students might begin to act similarly in this particular circumstance. If the professor has indeed found out that these conditions are real, and the professor thinks that it is warranted to give this person an extension because of these outlandish circumstances, he has made a decision based upon logical thought, not purely on emotion. Appeals to emotion also might be appeal to pity, appeal to popularity, appeal to happiness or success, etc. An appeal to popularity would be that somebody is so popular, say a famous actor or actress, and you appreciate their work so much that you might think that they are a good candidate for a political position or something of that nature. Or you might think that the uh, product that they're endorsing is a worthwhile product to invest your money in simply because of the person's popularity. Appeals to happiness, sadness, pity, etc. all fall under the category of appeal to emotion. What's important to note is, is the argument being based solely upon emotion? Are there no other arguments given than you'll feel happy or this will make you sad unless you do X being presented? Like our example of the student, yes, all of the examples were emotional influences. However, the final argument is that these are extraordinary conditions rather than purely emotional issues. The student should have come to the professor a lot earlier than they did to explain to the professor what was going on. That they didn't or that they waited so long is questionable to some degree. We do need to verify that this story is true. After all, if they're making it up, then they deserve absolutely no consideration for an extension. That is why the appeal to emotion is a difficult fallacy to determine. 
we are often caught up in the emotion of the presentation. We often see appeals to emotion used in debates, and in future analysis of debate, I will explain when the appeal of emotion is being used to try to sway the audience, one way or another. It's very hard to detect because our emotions are involved. Think carefully when you encounter emotional appeals. Is the emotion the only thing that the argument is based on? If not, then it is not committing this fallacy per se. But if you make your choice based solely upon emotion, then you have committed this fallacy. Did this video make you feel good? If so, favor it. 